In the last part, Shenron, the Eternal Dragon, now finds himself in a human-like form. Shenron, who used to be omnipotent, now grapples with his newfound limitations and chronophobia, a fear of time passing. Kami, his master, entrusts him with a grave responsibility to watch over Goku and be ready to act against Piccolo if necessary. Kami warns Shenron that he's the last defense against darkness should Kami fall, placing a heavy burden on Shenron's shoulders. Shenron struggles with this duty, and his shifting identity, now being part human, no longer only Eternal Dragon. And as Shenron and Goku prepare for the 23rd World Martial Arts Tournament, Shenron conceals his true identity from Goku's friends, fearing that they might exploit his dragon powers, should they know the truth, for personal gain. His interactions with the group, including the likes of Bulma, Launch, Master Roshi, Krillin, Yamcha, Chaozu, and Ten Shinhan, are awkward but humorous, as they fail to recognize him. Shenron adopts the name to them as Shen Lang, just to blend in, and it works. Now, during the tournament, Shenron faces eternal conflict and external challenges, reflecting on his dragon nature and the daunting task ahead of him. The tournament unfolds with intense battles showcasing Shenron's power and the strengths of Goku and other fighters. Shenron, again under the guise of Shen Lang, fights valiantly, but ultimately, the responsibility of stopping Piccolo finally rests on Goku's shoulders. In a dramatic turn of events, Goku defeats Piccolo, but chooses to spare his life, going against everything Shenron expected, believing Goku in the potential for change and the need of a strong rival. This decision leaves Shenron, Kami, and others stunned. Kami even offers Goku the role of Guardian of Earth for this surprising act, but Goku playfully declines. The part ends with Shenron, now more human than Dragon, reflecting on this altered mission realizing he must keep an eye on Piccolo, symbolizing a new chapter in his existence, which I shall bring to you now. It had been a very surreal experience for Shenron. He was experiencing these newfound emotions and instincts that he had never had to process before. Having gained a sense of purpose after training with Goku and Kami, he then realized that with said purpose came a lot of tension and apprehension. The son of King Piccolo was not what he had expected. Instead of being yet another incarnation of the devil himself, he had proven to have acquired strange mutations along the way. It was something akin to mercy that he was showing, and Goku had vowed to fight him again someday. What kind of scenario and challenge was that? Another emotion that was washing over him in that moment, it wasn't one he particularly enjoyed experiencing, something that he had grown to fear. He had felt it when King Piccolo had blasted him away back when he was a dragon. It was a feeling of anger. Anger at having been eliminated out of sheer cowardice and paranoia. Shemon cursed under his breath. The eternal dragon, succumbing to such base drives, but... He had to remember, he was not the Eternal Dragon anymore, or at least not entirely at that present moment. But then again, he had been frequently visiting the home of Goku and Chi Chi, acting more like a human, who had since the tournament taken up residence on the plains of Mount Paozu after generous donations from the Ox King. The couple had been quite reclusive since tying the knot, but Goku had been more than happy for Shenron to spend time with them. They didn't want to ice him out. After all, he was a special being to them, and he had trained with them closely on the lookout. That, and the Four Star Ball was always around, therefore pulling him in. Chi Chi also welcomed Shenron as their guest, Goku having spilled the beans about his identity to his now wife, because no keeping secrets. Shenron wasn't at all pleased at the slip of the tongue, but Chi Chi had vowed to keep the dragon secret safe, in exchange for something. In exchange for Shenron not telling anyone about the fact that they were expecting soon their first child. Shenron had found the pregnancy test that she had bought at the store one day, and he was just 
casually waving it around in front of her face when Goku was out catching their meal for the evening. This was something she wasn't expecting a dragon to be curious about, but he was. Tell me, how does it feel to be creating life? Chi Chi wasn't sure what to say about that. I... I don't know. I never thought about it that way. I just... I'm excited to be starting a family with the man I love. Shenron found that truly fascinating. I see. Well, give the unorthodox phrasing of mine. It's hard for someone such as myself to comprehend things on such a singular level. The truth is, I don't understand the little things that make up mortal life. As a dragon who lived in a perpetual state of non-time, said passage of it is something that both intrigues me and frightens me. That is something I hope to gleam in this form, some clarity, and a means to no longer be afraid. He placed a hand on his chest. I will get there someday, to understand everything, but one thing I do understand in the here and now is that the bond that you and Goku have is truly special. You are perfect for one another. Chi Chi blushed and thanked Shenron for the warm words. This coming from an all-knowing and long-living being was high praise. But sure enough, Shenron kept his word, telling no one, not even Kami, about the secret that he had kept. However, he did not lose sight of the mission that he had tasked himself originally. On the days that not much was going on around Mount Palzu, Kami would occasionally report to Shenron as to the goings and comings of Piccolo, since they obviously had that connection, which allowed the sage old man to monitor sporadic movements which were enough for the dragon to use to aim to track the demon's spawn. For one particular situation, Shenron committed to following Piccolo for days on end once he got the trail. Throughout all that time, Shenron was expecting the Green Man to be plotting his revenge, taking his anger out on wild animals, seeking to destroy the world government, claim it for himself and his father once more. Do what the original Piccolo did. After all, this version was even stronger than the Elder. He'd be even more dangerous. Goku was barely able to get out of that battle in one piece, and yet there was none of that going on. For the most part, this Piccolo spent his days and nights just meditating. It looked rather peaceful, in fact. Of course, Piccolo did spend time training physically. He was even working on some kind of technique that meant placing two fingers on his forehead and then charging something. But before Shenron could gather more information as to what this technique was going to be, the son of the demon spoke out. Come on out! I know you're there! Shenron was flabbergasted. How, do, how did he know he was there? No, wait, no, it was a bluff. Yes, Piccolo was bluffing the sneak. No, no, he would just stay put and hope that whoosh, a ball of energy shot past his mane of hair and took out a nearby tree. I will not ask again. Come out. No point hiding now. Shenron gulped and stepped out into the clearing where Piccolo, who had been meditating once more, stood before him. Not about to attack, though. What do you want? Clearly something important, since you've been stalking me for days. How do you know that? Said Shenron, surprised, but then it clicked. I should have been more careful. Piccolo laughed. <laughs> Pathetic. For something so magical, you seriously forgot about the sensitive hearing that I and Kami possess? You did not think this through, did you? Desperation got the better of you. Do you believe everything that old man tells you? Shenron gritted his teeth, not wanting to hear any more about Kami. He launched a fierce punch in defense of his master. It connected with Piccolo's face, him taking the strike, with a smirk on that face not going away. I'm amazed at how unstable you truly are. You're supposed to be the eternal dragon after all. Shenron reeled back and was shocked. How do you, how do you know that? Come on, Shen Lang or Shen Long or whatever name you chose. The human scum may have been bull, but not me. The son of the great Dean King Piccolo. The one who was able to snuff you into oblivion. 
He said that with a very wry laugh, which goaded Shenron into attacking again. Sure enough, his attacks were just being rebuffed by Piccolo, but he wasn't so weak that it meant they didn't hurt. He wasn't being trounced, Shenron. No, he could defend himself, but the desire to badly injure the other half of the Nameless Guardian was carrying him through. Piccolo then struck him back several feet, calling a halt to proceedings. Enough! He gazed at Shenron for a second. What's your end goal, Dragon? You do realize that we're in a sort of stalemate at the moment. You can't kill me without killing your grandpa. Shenron clenched his fist. And you can't kill me because you need the Dragon Balls to take over the world. Piccolo raised his brow. I don't need the Dragon Balls to do that, but I may want them somewhere down the line. So I guess you're half right. So now what? The two looked at each other for what seemed like hours. In the end, it was the dragon that broke the silence. Do not kill any more innocent people. Piccolo looked rather quizzically at that. Too much to ask, I see, said the dragon with venom in his voice. No, inaccurate. I have not killed anyone, nor have I injured anyone. All I've been striving for in this existence is to kill one man, Son Goku, to avenge my father. I hate to disappoint you, but I don't plan on killing anyone at this time. My goal is simple. And then what? What after killing Goku? Piccolo chuckled. <laughs> Some faith you have in a friend. Goku dying should be out of the question for you. You've got a lot to learn about how mortals work, my friend. I am not your friend! Now promise me, do not kill anyone! Piccolo grunted, rolling his eyes. If it'll get you to leave me alone, fine. Have it your way. But when it comes to Goku and I, you stay out of it. Kami was wrong to make you his personal bodyguard. He couldn't defend the world himself, so he trusted that protection to you, roping you into it. Now get out of here, or else I change my mind about wanting the Dragon Balls. He charged up a ball of energy as a threat to make the dragon go away, but the Dragon Man didn't need the warning. He stormed off in a rage, promising himself to better himself. That night, he requested to train harder with Goku than ever before. Why the need, buddy? Piccolo ain't gonna do nothing bad. He hasn't so far. Shenron wanted to tell him about what Piccolo had said to him, including the dig and suspicions around Kami, but he couldn't bring himself to do it. I just want to do what Kami had charged me to do. Protect you and your family, as well as the planet. Goku nodded. I appreciate it, bud. Okay, we'll start in the morning. However, Shenron's assistance was required soon after. Not concerning the Dragon Balls, but more in terms of practicality and a pair of hands. Gigi was giving birth to Gohan, and Shenron was very much needed to aid in the arrival of their firstborn. Shenron wanted a crash course in what creating life was all about and how mortals worked. Well, uh, no time like the present. After a very haggard time for all concerned, including many dropped towels and almost a dropped baby, Gohan was born. Goku and Chi Chi cradled their newborn son, Shenron looking on and using the human invention known as a camera to capture the moment. He quite liked this thing. I must say, Chi Chi, I have learned much today about life in great detail. Chi Chi laughed, but in a tired fashion, still appreciating the joke. What's so funny? The dragon said, but then Goku motioned over to Shenron. Hey, come join us in the picture, will ya? Shenron looked surprised. Me? But why, Goku? Cause you're family. That and you're the eternal dragon. You've been a real help around here, so come on, hop in. He motioned between him and Chi Chi. She nodded in agreement. Yes, you're part of our family now. Thank you for being here. Shenron was, he was overwhelmed with these fangled emotions again. He set the camera up and set it to capture by itself. He nestled himself in between Chi Chi, Goku, and now Gohan behind the couch because he was quite tall and smiled, smiling. It still felt odd to him, but it was nice. This whole thing felt nice. The camera went snap and the picture 
was taken. It still hangs on their fridge to this day. Shenron was beginning to understand what it meant to be human. Not through sensation, but through emotion. Would this stand him in good stead for the future? Mm. It's kind of hard to say, but he was okay with this for now. A few years later, Shenron and Goku were busy collecting wood for the fireplace in their annual collection dozens of miles away, right where the best kindling was to be found. It had been a lovely little tradition that they had acquired. Sure, they could get their lickety split, but it was nice. But what happened next was not so nice. A twitch of negative energy they felt cracked through their minds, and they sensed something bad had happened back at the homestead. Without a moment to lose, they dropped the firewood that they had acquired, rushing back home as fast as they could, to find Chi Chi and Ox King out cold, and Gohan nowhere to be seen. What had happened? Shenron immediately jumped to conclusions. Piccolo! A scoundrel! Chi Chi shook her head. No, not him. Others, hurry. Go get our baby boy back. She fell unconscious once more. Goku and Shenron looked to each other and nodded. Let's go, said Goku with authority. And with that, the pair flew to the last place that they could sense Gohan's energy. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.